Welcome back, spiritual seeker. Are you ready for this one? Long before Plato, Descartes, or Newton, there was Pythagoras of Samos, the ancient Greek philosopher and mystic who saw in number the key to understanding both matter and mind. To most people today, Pythagoras is remembered for a simple theorem about triangles, but to his followers, he was something far greater, a seer of the cosmic order, a teacher who unveiled the hidden harmony that links the universe, the soul, and the divine. Pythagoras believed that everything is number, and that through the vibrations of harmony, the entire cosmos sings the music of God. His vision was not merely mathematical, it was spiritual, a revelation that the structure of reality is consciousness expressed through proportion, rhythm, and resonance. Pythagoras lived in the 6th century BCE, traveling through Egypt, Babylon, and possibly India, gathering wisdom from priests and sages. He founded a school in Croton, southern Italy, where philosophy, mathematics, and mysticism merged into a single discipline, a sacred science of being. His followers, the Pythagoreans, lived by strict ethical rules and saw numbers not as abstractions, but as living archetypes, the very thoughts of God. For Pythagoras, mathematics was not invented by humans. It was discovered because it already existed in the divine mind. To study number was to participate in the order of creation itself. This sacred view of mathematics laid the foundation for centuries of Western philosophy, science, and metaphysics. Pythagoras taught that the cosmos is a living harmony, a perfectly tuned instrument whose movements produce a celestial symphony, what he called the music of the spheres. The planets, in their orbits, emit vibrations proportional to their distances and speeds, forming a cosmic scale inaudible to human ears, but perceptible to the awakened soul. This music reflects divine order, the way consciousness expresses itself as rhythm, geometry, and vibration. To the Pythagoreans, studying the heavens was not just astronomy. It was the contemplation of divine consciousness manifesting as mathematical order. The stars were not mere balls of gas. They were notes in the Song of God. For Pythagoras, number was sacred, the bridge between the infinite and the finite. Each number symbolized a principle of existence. The one represented unity and the divine source. The two represented duality and manifestation. The three symbolized harmony. The four, matter and structure. And the ten, completion and return. This numerological vision suggested that the universe is not random but structured according to intelligible patterns, and that these patterns can be known by the human mind because consciousness itself is mathematical. When Einstein later described reality as the comprehensible made manifest, he echoed this ancient insight. The human mind can know the universe because both arise from the same rational harmonic order. Pythagoras taught that just as the cosmos is governed by mathematical harmony, so too is the human being. As above, so below, the structure of the soul mirrors the structure of the universe. The rhythm of the heart, the frequencies of the brain, even the geometry of our DNA all reflect cosmic proportion. The Pythagoreans used music and geometry as tools for spiritual purification. By tuning the soul through meditation, chanting, and contemplation of form, they believed one could attune to the divine frequencies that sustain the cosmos. In this view, consciousness is not merely human, it is a resonance of the divine harmony itself, vibrating through the body, the mind, and the stars. For Pythagoras, knowledge of cosmic order was inseparable from ethical transformation. Harmony was not only mathematical, but moral. To live in harmony meant to bring the soul into resonance with the divine proportions of the cosmos, to align thought, word, and action with truth. Disordered emotions and selfish impulses were seen as forms of disharmony, while virtue was understood as inner balance. 
This is why Pythagoras and his followers practiced silence, vegetarianism, and contemplation. Disciplines meant to refine consciousness into a pure vessel for divine reason. The just life, the beautiful life, and the musical life were one and the same, each a reflection of the mathematics of the soul. The Pythagorean vision has never truly died. Centuries later, Kepler, Newton, and Einstein each rediscovered aspects of this cosmic harmony. Kepler wrote that the planets move according to divine ratios, Newton revealed the mathematical laws of gravity, and Einstein described the fabric of space-time itself as a geometric field. Even in modern physics, vibration remains at the heart of reality. String theory proposes that the fundamental building blocks of the universe are tiny oscillating strings, echoes of the Pythagorean music of the spheres. From sound waves to brain waves, from DNA helices to galaxies, all of existence appears to vibrate in patterns that suggest consciousness as the hidden order behind all form. The message of Pythagoras is timeless. The universe is not chaos, but cosmic intelligence expressed as harmony. By studying number, music, and proportion, we begin to see the pattern of divine consciousness reflected in everything. The soul, too, is a harmonic field. When it vibrates in tune with the greater whole, it experiences joy, peace, and clarity. Pythagoras reminds us that enlightenment is not an escape from the world, but an attunement to its music. To awaken is to hear the silent symphony of creation, the mathematics of divine mind playing through every atom, every heartbeat, every star. Pythagoras's legacy is more than a theorem. It is a revelation. All things are numbers, and all numbers are divine. Harmony is the expression of consciousness woven into the structure of the cosmos. The same principles that govern music and geometry govern the unfolding of the soul. To contemplate these patterns is to approach God, not as a distant being, but as the eternal intelligence pulsing through existence. In this understanding, Mathematics is not cold or abstract, but sacred and alive, the very language of the divine mind. The music of the spheres is still playing, and through the awakening of consciousness, we can finally begin to hear it. If you got to this point, remember to check out the description below for recommended literature for you to expand deeper on this topic. Thanks for watching and supporting this project by sharing your thoughts in the comments. I will see you tomorrow with another video.